Now, I'm delighted to be here on this beautiful sunny day in County Limerick with my guest for the uh, weekend edition of What Matters programme with myself, John Prendergast, in the company of a lovely lady, Leona O'Callaghan. Leona, it's great to be here and thank you for inviting me to your own home. Thank you for coming out. It's not easy to find. No, I know. And I, <laughs> the, 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 the actual yawn there was not me or Leona, but it was beautiful <laughs> little dog here right beside me called Lamb Mo- Chops. No, Mojo. Oh, Mojo. Mojo. Oh, sorry, Mojo. <laughs> I just call him Lamb Chops. He and the other dog him. then is... is buddy. I'm, I'm Buddy. buddy. Uh, we, 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 we'll have a few words with him now, you know. <laughs> I'll but, tell you all my secrets now, John. Oh, <laughs> I can tell you. Isn't it great to have them? I love dogs too. Oh right. my God. I have to have I have to have animals in my own life. They bring out the soft side. They do. They, they do. They, when you relate to nature and yeah. that is the whole the whole thing. And just parallel to that, Leona, um, I know maybe next week we'll be talking more about your work with Haven. Yes. And that actually relates to people able to relate to wildlife, to nature. Absolutely. Because obviously nature can help people an awful lot. And it's there. So we're going to discuss that a little later on. No uh, next that, week. That, that if you good. allow me back, of course. If of you course. allow me back. But now there are a number of issues that have taken centre stage. And one of them, of course, is the investigation, the ongoing investigation into the conduct of our city county councils across the country. And it's uh, leading to a lot of disquiet among taxpayers, to say the least, Absolutely. and ratepayers. But in particular, we have another issue debacle that's coming up, and this has come up, is the University of Limerick. Talk to me a little bit about the background of that. Yes, um, well, I, I worked in the university in the accounts department for a number of years, about mm-hmm. six years, I believe. Um, <laughs> I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I was very proud to be working there. Um, it's a huge part of the community. It has a beautiful campus, still does. Yes. Um, and I, I, I loved working there initially. Um, and then I met my 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 second husband there. Um, and basically, um, after some time, I was uh, promoted. Yes. To to look after expenses. Now up to then, I was kind of always involved with money mm-hmm. coming in to, mm-hmm. to the university. Yes. And then when I was promoted to expenses. Um, it was it was new, but I I done another job, so I knew what I, I knew what I was doing. Yes. And um, straight away, straight away, I could see a lot of kind of inconsistencies. I suppose mm. number one, we were the only university that didn't have an expenses policy. Yes. So it was very hard then to to kind of be able to see what should and shouldn't be accepted. Um. <clears throat> so if that was the first thing I worked on. I did a lot of research. I looked at other policies. And then I realised actually it wasn't just the, the lack of a policy, it was a cultural issue um, where basically the, the, there was one set of rules for the ordinary Joe Soap who would normally be on a regular salary and things were very strict. It's very strict to the level that at one stage I actually, I, I stopped the payment of a muffin. Um, I remember it, it was one euro sixty, a muffin with a cup of tea that he had had at a conference because I was told he'd had a three course meal, he didn't need a muffin. Right. So I'd, I'd stopped that at one stage because, you know, that was an ordinary, ordinary Joe Soap that was yes. at a conference. And um, mm. and yet at the same time, there was seemed to be a kind of a, a VIP list of people that no rules applied to, ah, yes. that I wasn't to challenge. And I found that very, very difficult. So it was like a two-tier system. Absolute two-tier yes, system. Yes. And these were the people that were on megabucks. Yes. So that's what that, that, that's what was hard. And, and a lot of it came down to, oh, no, we won't send that expense back because, um, you know, that person goes for coffee with, with you know, the financial controller, the financial director, um, you know. And so pressure would be put on to kind of just, I suppose, um, ignore the rules, to, to let things slide, to turn a blind eye. And... It, it triggered something in me, I think. You know, looking back now, I understand it better. Number one, I started getting well. Uh, sorry, I started getting unwell. Oh, I see. Um, and what that was it, was, it was related to a time in my life where, again, I was put under pressure with secrecy. And even though that had nothing to do with money, it wasn't a safe, a safe place to be. So when I started to feel this wrongdoing that I needed to be quiet about, and now that I'm an adult it started to trigger that part. So I started to kind of really struggle with this pressure to be silent about something that we all knew was wrong. Mm. And that was the, the, the kind of the, the, the use of public money 
for personal gain. I see. I see exactly what you mean. Now, there, the, there was an issue there. It was the Public Accounts Committee as well. And uh, the chair lady, if I can call that, if that's the correct word, of the Board of Governors of the UL was before them. Yes. And I think there was a lot of anxiety over one particular item. And it was this. And I think there is a report now that is now in the public domain that is going to another level because of the, again, the public political disquiet of the the running, or we call it in Latin, the modus operandi of the institution. Now, for I, I know inflation is there, but how can a particular building to become part of the campus of the University of Limerick uh, be uh, sold for three million, and all of a sudden, um, two or three years later, is signed off for eight million. Now that to me is a fifty-five, sixty percent increase, and I think this has caused major, major worry. But we want to make sure the lecturers, the ordinary staff, there's no. Ill will towards them. Not at all. Because That's we want idea. to clarify that because this is not a witch hunt. No. It's just to get the transparency there, get the information out and get it corrected. That's what I find the hardest, actually, John, is there's a lot of really hard working people that I yes. still have very, I, I, I'd mm. be very close friends with some of them that work extremely hard and are, are, have huge um, ethical and moral um, the compasses within them. So this is not something that everybody in the university yes. has, um, is, is, is guilty of. This is a, a unique circle, mm. the, like I say, the VIP list of people that don't get challenged. Yes. And that feel they're above any sort of oversight. Yes. Um, and that, that building is a typical example. Like, you know, I mean, to buy a computer for 500 euro, you're supposed to get three quotations. Yes, correct. Um, you're supposed to go through, through procurement. There's, there's different measures. So naturally enough, something of that value, you'd imagine would have needed to, to kind of pass all sorts of valuations. Yes. And again, it's the case of being answerable and we all need to be accountable. Mm. And it's the, the lack of accountability when those decisions are made. And like that, it was, you know, whether it's a, like the stuff that I processed when I was there, like it was a spa treatment. I was, you know, that, that people were getting, um, that people were applying for under public money, a uh, fitted kitchen that uh, one oh. of the lecturers applied for, um, for, for their home. Um, a fitted the, kitchen? A fitted kitchen. On, yeah, on public money? Yeah, the delivery money. of a fitted kitchen and it was paid. I paid it. Um, another person you know, like that, it was um, it was flights for them and their wife to go to Sydney, and they were on sabbatical leave, which is, I suppose, you're not you're meant to you get paid your salary, but that's that's supposed to be it. But that, that sounds um, like, uh, but fifteen thousand he got paid, and I was told to pay it in five thousand euros um, at a time, so yeah. the auditors won't installment. Ah, oh, for goodness' sake! Literally, so we all knew which was wrong, and I was saying that's to them, disgusting. That's it was it was terrible, and like that. I got to the point then where, because I kept saying, look, I want somebody else to sign this. I'm not comfortable with it. I yes. know yeah. um, I know it's wrong. I'm not okay yeah. with it. I don't want to part in it. Yes. And um, nobody would sign it. So it kept put, yeah. putting me under pressure to sign. Yes. I wanted to keep my job. But of at the same time, did. I wanted to be able to look in the mirror and like who I am. And, but that was yeah. disgraceful to put you in a position like that. That, that's I mean, the hardest part, yeah. Well, do you know what? I think I'll become a lecturer and qualified. Because <laughs> I get a free fitted kitchen, so... Free fitted Could kitchens. I go to Sydney then? Well, that's it. It's or like, America? I, like, the thing is, I stopped. Like, first it was a €4,000 payment for him and his wife. And, yes. And they said, no, 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 like, write back to him and tell him, you know, his wife isn't um, isn't part of you well and see what you get. Um, and I did, and then he he asked me for my title. It was very much a, who am I who am I dealing with here? So I oh, gave it to him, dear. and uh, and he said, okay, well now I've decided to I, I I'll take off my wife's. I said, you know, I said I think you made a mistake. Yes. The way I was always told. Right, yes. I think you made a mistake. Yes, yes. And um and he said, well now I think I'm gonna I'm gonna charge for my my time in advance and um, upped it to fifteen thousand to teach me a lesson of not not to not to kind of reject the four thousand. That is disgusting. And when I went to my bosses I was really upset about it. Of I course. said I really don't want to pay it. We all know it shouldn't be paid. He's retiring soon. He's on sabbatical leave. You know, and uh now yeah, no doubt found a conference that he was able to say that's the reason I'm going. Yeah. But um 
yeah, it was it was awful. And at first, I had their their support, but then it came came to me of you know actually, Leona, the decision's been made to, to pay it. I said, okay, well, you sign it, and they wouldn't sign it. Ah, you know, so, so you were the scapegoat. I was the scapegoat. Yes, and yes. So I got to a place then where like that, I didn't want to actually cause trouble. I didn't. I wanted to keep my job. So I went to HR. Um, I was honest with them, and I didn't realize that actually the culture that was in there included the HR department, which later on, as prime time kind of, I suppose, revealed the one of the top people in HR um, was, was very much involved in in, in, in a lot of this. You yes, know? yes. But I went and I had a meeting actually with him mm. and he seemed and he sang, you know, he gave me a lot of lip service and said yeah. that he can't believe it's going on. He had no idea. I, I met with my financial controller. I met with the financial director. Yes. I was straight up. I said, I need a list of people I'm not allowed to challenge. Yes. The VIP list that you, you make excuses for mm. and I want you to sign them. So I said, look, I'll be a secretary. I'll do filing. I'll do anything. But I don't, I'm not prepared to do this. Um, And basically they kind of pushed back. I became, you know, people were afraid, I think, to go for even for lunch with me. It was very much, I became the problem. Yes. Because I was the one raising the problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I went out sick for a bit because it it got to me emotionally. It got to my mental health. Of course it would. And it had triggered a lot of kind of pressure to do the wrong thing. And um, and I was trying to deal with that, so I took some time off. And then when I when I got stronger and went to come back, they offered me six times my salary and a pension for the rest of my life to go quietly. Oh, just to leave. Just to leave and to sign this confidentiality clause. Oh, this famous, um, yeah. yeah and, oh Lord, non disclosure. And I said, well, I'd be as bad as you if I took it. Yeah. And I said, absolutely not. Now, Weren't you a great woman to stand on your own principle? I think most people in Ireland are actually. They I are. Think, I think most that people is disgusting. are people. It's just when but, you're dealing with that, you say yes. to yourself, why can't I just fit in? Because everybody else knew and nobody else. Yes. And I'm not saying nobody else, but very few people were kind of having the same stance. And, and you do question yourself and you say, why can't I just do what it takes to, mm. to pay my mortgage, to keep my job? And and then I said, because it just means too much. My, my morals just means too much to me. Yeah. So. Um, so I said no, and then I, I blew the whistle instead. Now, like that, I, I came away eventually a, a half year salary. Yes, um, yes. I lost my superannuation pension because of that. Yes. And um, and then after that, there was a public inquiry that vindicated me and proved everything that I'm saying. I wouldn't say make any allegations no, that hasn't no, come no. out. In and I just wanted accounts. to intervene yeah. there as well. Because all of this has been actually aired on RTE Prime aired. Prime. So yeah. it's legally based legally researched there are no slanderous statements being no. made here anything like that it's out in the public domain it and is. now it's with the public accounts committee as well and it was actually with them before so um, yes, there's actually yes. a video where and in fairness um mm. like we had uh, there there was some huge support for people uh, was when the the previous president uh don barry at the time was yes. up in front of them and mr field which was the financial uh, director um, were asked a lot of questions and that's out in the public domain where they spoke openly and the, the fitted kitchen was discussed, spa treatments was discussed, the, the trip how can was discussed. Leave it that? I mean, how can actually... I, I'm flabbergasted. I mean, people have to go and increase their mortgage to get a fitted kitchen now or to get a loan from the credit union. Mm. No matter whether you're a politician or whether you're a guardee or whether you're you're a teacher or whatever it's there are norms that are done and um the one thing is though the higher education authority the hea have now withdrawn funding yes. for the ul about time and i think now <laughs> lessons later yeah yes. 10 years later two people that were very much involved um were finally mm. arrested so they are being held to account and the university themselves are beginning to have to recognize because the hea to be fair did speak to me very honestly and um, mm. you know and they basically said that the university's reaction to them at the time was to take legal action against them yes. so they had to change the law to force UL to be accountable to them Isn't that um, yeah the university's act had to be changed so so like they just wouldn't allow challenge they wouldn't be accountable to could they be shut down could they be I, suspended it would be a horrible thing could no to be, but yeah. could the university status be taken from them because that is disgusting yeah. i mean there are people out there that are homeless yeah. there are people out there losing their jobs there are people out there who can't afford to pay uh, their mortgage or their yeah. utility bills and these this elitism 
That's the, there. It's disgusting. The people that were getting those kind of expenses were on top money. You're talking well over 100,000 a year. That's, that's as, uh, shall we castigate yeah. the politicians if they do anything wrong yeah. on high salary and expense accounts, which very rarely they do now in yeah. fairness, because there are norms yeah. and there are procedures. But th this is disgraceful. I they mean, knew the, the cost centres that wouldn't be audited and you'd, I'd know by the cost centre. I'd, I'd get it. I'd know by the cost centre. I'd know by the person who approved it. That it's you know the the ones that I need yes. to look out for and and I suppose the biggest thing for me was mm -hmm. like I just didn't want the stance I took cost me my job eventually it cost me you know it, it, it took its toll on my health of course it did yes um you know it took its toll on my family um I I was married at the time my ex husband had worked there for twenty odd years um very hard on started, him he started to get into <clears throat> like that he used to always be invited to the the christmas party of for the course, yes, department yes. and suddenly he was wasn't invited and nobody in his office was invited right um you know so things like that that with that you know just changed and <clears throat> you know suddenly people who were used to salute him stopped saluting him so now like that he still works there and things are fine again thankfully um you know but it, it, all of us paid a price my children paid a price because i couldn't afford the things that i i would have been able to if i kept my job two questions one is are you happy that you took the moral stance that you did and and actually uh, your financial income halved, your perks halved. Are you happy that you made that conscious decision to do that? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I'd be I'd be financially better off if I took their initial um their initial <clears throat> offer. Um, yes. but I couldn't look in the mirror and say I did the right thing. And I I, I wanted my kids to know because because what they taught my children was that when you do the right thing, you get punished. And I wanted them to not just learn that lesson, See. you know. I didn't want them to learn that when you do yes. the right thing, then you pay a price, you know. And that's what they taught <clears throat> my children. Um, so, you know, I've, I've made it very clear to them that, you know, if I had, I suppose, played ball, if I had uh, taken the, the personal benefit that I'd been offered to stay quiet, Yes. I'd always know. And, you know, that's <clears> that's the thing with integrity. It's it's what you do when no one's looking. At the time, there was no public inquiry. At the time, I very much was the only one speaking out. Two other whistleblowers came forward afterwards. And then like that, there was a public inquiry. But at the time, when 